Welcome to the Pure Parenthood podcast, brought to you by Pure Baby. I'm your host, Tiffany Wells, and I'm the head educator here at Pure Baby. Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to welcome our guest today, Gabrielle Nancaro, founder of Gather, a space to educate, support, and hold space for women. Gabrielle is a birth doula, educator, and a doula mentor, and runs her business Gather while raising her three children, Cammy. Audrey and Frederick. Gabrielle is also an author of a recently released book called The Birth Space. In this week's episode, we'll be discussing what a doula is, do new parents need one and why. Thanks so much for coming on today, Gabrielle. Thank you, Tiffany. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, it's so great to have you. Thanks for joining us. So it's always great hearing a bit about people and how they come into their role that they play in life now and the journey that they've, I guess, taken to get there. So before we jump into discussing all things doula related, could you tell us why you actually decided to become a doula, Gabrielle? Yeah, yes, I will. I would love to share that with you. So I first heard what a doula was when I was 35 weeks pregnant with my first baby. Um, So it was pretty late into my pregnancy when I even found out what a doula was. I had no idea what one was before that. Mm. Um, I was living in New York City and my yoga teacher suggested that I get a doula. I think she sort of had a sense that I was a little bit disconnected from um, the fact that I was about to give birth and I was about to go into my first postpartum and I really wasn't that well educated. I mean, I had my yoga, which was sort of keeping me grounded in my body, but I didn't really have a lot of education behind me and I was pretty unprepared. I just sort of chosen an obstetrician that a friend recommended. I was planning a hospital birth, but beyond that, I hadn't done any education and she just gently suggested that maybe a doula might be a good idea. Mm. So I asked her what a doula was and she explained a little bit about it and then said, look, go to Carriage House Birth. It's a space in Brooklyn. They have doulas. Go along, find out what they are and see if, you know, it's for you. So that weekend we went to Carriage House Births for um, a meet and greet doula session and we hired our doula on the spot and she was incredible. And we thought, you know, I thought my partner as well at the time, he was just thinking the same as me, like why had we not heard of this before and um, how amazing it was that she was there and she was going to show up for us in the last weeks of our pregnancy and um, the birth as well. So fast forward to that birth, it was an incredible um, empowering experience and she taught us so much just in the last weeks of pregnancy and then how she showed up for us at the birth was just incredible and through my postpartum as well supported us through that and I really didn't think that um, we would have had the experience we'd had without her and I just remember thinking towards the end of my birth and as I gave birth like I want to do what you're doing Um, the support that she provided us just made so much sense to me I just thought you know without her how would this how would this have gone and it just was a really sort of you know honestly life-changing experience so that experience stuck with me that I sort of went into my um, my life as a mother and I was went back to work quite quickly in New York and I worked for about a year after my daughter was born but quickly sort of burnt out it was a pretty intense experience having a toddler and working full time (laughs) and it was just a lot for my husband and I and our our daughter so we left New York City and um, came back to Melbourne and um, all, all the while in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I really would love to become a doula. Like this really makes sense to me. And it mm. wasn't um, until I had my second baby, um, until sort of my eldest was four years old, that I eventually went back to New York and trained at Carriage House Birth, where I found my doula to become a doula myself. So it took me a little while, which I think is quite often the case with doulas, is that, you know, you get the seed is kind of planted and then life happens and gets in the way. And I really felt ready when my second daughter was about one to really step into the work. Yeah, wow, what a massive journey. Like it's it's wonderful mm-hmm. to hear where you've come from and why it's meant so much to you. And I think knowing that things um, have happened the way they have due to your own personal experience just means so much as well and really speaks volumes about the dedication you must feel and the passion um, that you have yeah. for being becoming a doula. Yes, absolutely, I do. I'm so passionate about this work. Yeah, so Gabrielle, for everyone listening today, What is a doula? I know that's a really big question. Um, And if you could just take us through that a little bit now, that'd be really helpful for for everyone listening. So in short, a doula is somebody who shows up for you and supports you through a major life experience. So there are really, especially, um, so there are a couple of different kinds of doulas. So you can have conception doulas, birth doulas, pregnancy doulas, postpartum doulas. Um, And if we're talking specifically about birth doulas, then there really are many emotional and spiritual layers to conception and pregnancy 
um, and birth that our mainstream maternity system just does not pro provide enough support for. And as doulas, we really fill these emotional gaps. We hold space for birthing people to process their hopes and their fears. We talk about their histories and their stories, all of the things that show up in their birth that um, maybe they're not given space to talk about in other sort of areas of their care in the mainstream maternity care. Mm. And before their birth, we provide them with a lot of education and information and support in that sense. So we're there to provide them some continuity of care, which is really important, but it's really difficult to find in our current system. So mm. you may hire your own midwife or obstetrician if you're going privately, but it's really difficult, especially if you're in the public system, to find that continuity of care. So I think that's why a lot of um, people reach out to doulas now and doulas are becoming more popular, I guess, because we, are, we do provide that continuity that's really really difficult to find yeah I think that's so interesting because um, as I mentioned to you before we started talking today a little bit about the fact that I wanted to become a midwife myself and was looking into it and um, and even then looking a little bit into becoming a doula and um, felt very passionate about learning more about this and it was really interesting then to look into the types of models that were coming into play and this was around eight years ago so it was a little while ago now but they were looking into those sort of models of care back then and I know that's probably come a long way but I think there's still a lot more to be done in that in that area of continuity of care and I think that like you said if you can find a door that can provide that for you um, that's just incredible just to, to have that offering I think so, and I think that people are not so that they don't really realise until they get into the system that really there isn't a lot of time in appointments. Even if you have your obstetrician, the appointments are quite short, mm. and they're very focused on the physical health of the mother and the baby. There isn't a lot of time and space to really talk about those more emotional and really important layers to this transformative journey. So that is really where a doula comes in, and you know, where they're just to sort of talk to hold space bounce ideas off of and just provide that education and that continuity that um yeah is really lacking yeah so when it comes to all these different stages i guess just starting off with um the pregnancy what what sort of things can you expect from a doula during your pregnancy period sure so from the minute we're hired we're there for the birthing person and their partner if they have a partner to support them through their pregnancy and help prepare them for their birth and for their postpartum as well so yeah. every doula will work a little differently but in general we are available available by phone or by text or by email from the time we're hired we visit the family in their home usually for two to three prenatal meetings and during that time I drink a lot of tea and um, <laughs> we sort of we talk you know people sort of say how long are those meetings and me for me I don't put a time limit on them mm. I say they're at least probably three hours but sometimes I'm there all day it really depends on what comes up in that time mm. but we're there um, to listen to the, the birthing person and their partner their hopes and their fears I hold space for them and we talk about whatever comes up so everything from past losses and traumas to their cultural conditioning of birth any fears they might have around birth and that really come with that cultural conditioning growing up and it's this emotional preparation I feel like is that is really vital in helping people to prepare for the birth and um there's not, yeah, like I've said before, there's just not a lot of people providing this space for these conversations to happen. Mm. So that's kind of the emotional support we provide, but we also provide really practical informational support. So we help people navigate a really complex maternity system. We educate them on birth and their options. We talk about their rights in the birth space. We talk a lot about informed consent and what that really means mm. um, and how they're able to ask questions to have informed consent for every decision they're making during their pregnancy and during their birth mm. um, and we help them write their birth preferences and really prepare them as well for their postpartum which I think a lot of people sort of think it's a bit of an afterthought for a lot of people postpartum but mm. a lot of preparation has to go into that so we talk while they're pregnant about their postpartum and how they're going to be supported in that time. Yeah oh that's so important I think just keeping in mind that whole journey because it really is such a it is a long journey it's exciting and it's wonderful and it's as you said transformative but it is so important to think about all the different stages isn't it and and obviously then being aware too of, of the importance of those birth preferences again I've, we've spoken a lot about this throughout our podcast um, episodes in so many different ways and forms and I think understanding what your choices are when you when you do go into that birth space wherever it might be or laboring space um understanding what a birth preference is and knowing what it is that you want to have happen during that period is so important and so it's great that you're giving information about that and supporting parents through that journey 
Yeah, I think with birth preferences, people think, where do I start? What do I put on them? Mm. And, you know, I can't plan my birth while I even write them. It's not about planning your birth. It's absolutely not about that. It's about understanding all the potential scenarios of where your birth may go mm. and then understanding what your options and your choices are within those sort of segues to birth. So, yeah. um, you know, in the moment you might be put on the spot, you might be said, you know, you might be told to just kind of make a decision on something and you don't want to be blindsided by something you've never heard about or don't understand or don't have evidence around. Mm. You know, so it's just about understanding and really doing the work in your pregnancy to feel confident, educated and prepared, and especially for your partner as well, because the birthing person can advocate for themselves, but only so much up until a point, you know, when you're in labour, it's um, you, your sort of rational brain goes out the window. So I think it's really important for that birth partner to really stand up for you as well and and know you're and be educated and know what you're hoping for in that space and know what questions to ask. So you don't feel that you're just at the whim of, of what's going on, that you're really feeling in control. I think it's so important. Yeah, definitely. I think having that confidence and understanding and like I always say, knowledge is power. I repeat this every single time I think I talk to someone, but I guess because that's a huge part of my role anyway in, yeah, as an educator and um, I think it's just, it's so important. You can't underestimate the, the power of having that knowledge and feeling that confidence that comes with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah de definitely. Sure. So um, just take us through a little bit about too, if you wouldn't mind, the, I guess the role of that doula during that labour and birth because like obviously mm -hmm. pre preparation is really important and going through those birth preferences, understanding what happens, but what are the things that you actively do and you get support mm -hmm. on from a doula during that actual labour period? Most doulas are on call from about 37 weeks. And what that means is we're, you know, we're, we're nearby, we're ready for when you're going to, into labour. So from 37 weeks until the, when the baby's born. Usually, and every doula works quite differently, but usually we'll show up to support you during your labour when you're moving into active labour. So anyone who's given birth before would know that that early labour phase can go for quite a long time. So, mm. it, you know, it can be quick, but it can also go for days. So mm. during that early labour period, we're there, we're ready. I'm often talking on the phone with people. The first sort of five, six births I did, I turned up way too soon to the birth. <laughs> and then often I was there for, you know, over 30 hours and I was exhausted by the end. We were all exhausted and I felt like that wasn't the right way to be working and it wasn't the kind of support they needed from me. So now I'm, I'm quite sort of, I have my boundaries around when I show up at a birth and usually it is when they're moving into that more active labour phase. Mm. Um, depending on how long they want to, if they're having a hospital birth, if they want to stay at home for a long time, then I'll meet the birthing person at their home. If they're sort of keen to get into hospital, then I'll meet them at the hospital. It's really totally up to them what they're hoping for and we, we talk about that and we sort of do what we can to plan that but obviously that changes when labor happens and mm. you know we, we cannot predict how it's going to go so we sort of talk a lot about how they're going to feel about staying at home for a bit longer or wanting to get into the hospital and then once we're in the hospital I set the room up I make sure it feels more like a cozy safe dimly lit birthing space so mm. sometimes hospitals can feel quite sterile but i'll make sure the lights are dim the fairy lights are on the diffusers on the salt lamp is on we get the music on you know all of that can take some time because depending on how we show up person might be in like really true active labor and that's not quite my priority other than dimming the lights making sure they're down mm. if i have the time that's the kind of thing i'll do i'll set up the space yeah um and then throughout the labor we provide physical support so hip squeezes acupressure we suggest positions we massage warm water on the back those kinds of things to help um, support the person through their labor yeah um, if they've had an epidural then we're supporting them while they're on the bed to make sure that they're still in an active labor position so getting a peanut ball between their legs making sure that their um, hips are still open and baby still has space to move through encourage them to encouraging them to turn and all of that kind of thing so we've got we're skilled in all sorts of labor from completely physiological birth to birth with epidurals to water birth to cesarean birth so there's lots of options and um, ways that we can sort of work with all kinds of birth but um, in true physiological birth and we're doing a lot of that physical sort of relief to help mm. them through it yeah um, we provide a lot of emotional support so encouragement empathy a just a quiet presence just ensuring the lights stay down and her birth space is protected 
And we do a lot of normalizing of the experience, especially for the partner who might not have ever seen birth before. Yeah. So, you know, they might be a bit freaked out by the noises that are happening, but yeah. we're always saying that it's a really good thing. Okay, she's moving into transition. This is what we want to hear. Things are going really well. You know, we're sort of normalizing it and encouraging them to encourage the part to encourage the birthing person. Yeah. Um, and then pro we provide a lot of informational support, like I said. So if and when something comes up, like a like a care provider is suggesting augmentation where they want to um, add the syntocin and drip to um, speed up the labor. We talk about that. We listen. I listen with the family. We listen to the care provider's recommendation. I remind them what questions to ask and I ensure that they're really making a true informed decision and mm. I remind them of their rights and that they've got choices, um, which the care provider should be doing as well, but it's not always the case. So we're sort of just there, just gently reminding them that, you know, everything is a choice. Yeah. Um, and I very much show up for the partner as well. So a lot of people sort of say, you know, there's a partner there, why, why is there a doula? I'm supporting the partner just as much sometimes more than I'm supporting the birthing person because mm. like I said before partners do need a lot of support and encouragement themselves and they need breaks they need to step out of the room they need a bathroom they need food so we're there to really um make sure that they're feeling very empowered and involved in the experience and also having space to step out when they need to yeah so that's kind of what we do majority of the time through the birth yeah. Um, and like I said, cesarean, we support cesarean births as well. So we're there as well to make sure that during a cesarean birth that the person's fully informed of all their rights in that space as well and doing what we can to um, support them and making sure that their choices are really respected and heard. So Gabrielle, it's so great to know that there's there's so many different ways in which you can support a birthing mother, but also the partner during that birthing process, no matter how it goes, whether it be a Caesar or whether it be um, a natural like physiological birth like you said so inclusive which is great because I think some people might potentially think okay well I only really need a doula if I'm having and what they call you know natural birth a vaginal birth rather than thinking okay well no matter how it goes I still may need the support of a doula so it's so great to know that you've got that kind of ability to to be that support person no matter how things go yeah, and I, I've done a number of elective caesarean, I've supported a number of elective caesarean births, so birthing people who have chosen to have a caesarean, mm. and I've been there to support them through that experience, and that's been an incredible experience because this is the birth of your baby and this can be the most empowering thing in the world. It doesn't matter how the baby's born, you know, we just want to make sure that the birthing person feels in control, in their power, really mm. supported, really respected, and we do what we can to protect that space and um, make sure that that's the outcome for the person. It matters so much. Yeah, wonderful. So moving on to post-birth, and I guess like we talked about before, that po postpartum and that, that, that period after birth is also really important. So what kind of support, again, can we expect from a doula during that post-birth period? Yeah, I, I really wish that everyone had access to a postpartum doula. I think it's so important to have this um, care and it's something I've learned a lot more about. I've got three children, so, um, you know, I wasn't prepared sort of my first and second postpartum all that well, but my third I really was and I had the support that I needed and it's just made the world of difference. Mm. Um, so I really wish all mothers and all families had access to postpartum doulas. But what a postpartum doula does is that they show, they really show up for the family in that usually in the early postpartum period. So for the first sort of six to 12 work weeks after the baby's born mm. um they'll come usually a couple of times a week but sometimes more they'll cook they'll clean they'll hold the baby while mum sleeps and showers um they can help with breastfeeding they look after the other children if there are older children uh, they provide some physical support sometimes massage herbal baths that kind of thing mm. and then they provide really essential emotional support for the mother because the mother is going through a huge transformation post-birth whether it's her first baby or her fourth baby mm. um it's it's a birth each time for the mother as well so uh, we provide you know birth debriefing we listen to whatever the mother needs to share so whatever she's you know feeling in that moment during those days mm. it's really important that there's someone there who's showing up for the mother and really holding space for her mm. um so really we're doing whatever whatever is needed to ensure the mother's getting rest and that emotional support so it really depends on the family and what their needs are but it's just making sure that um we're there and we're providing that support and the mother's getting the rest that she needs post-birth yeah that's so great and i think like i know myself having three babies as well i've got some bonus kids but i have given birth to three um i think if i'd known more about what a post postpartum doula 
offers, I think I definitely would have take them, taken them up on that because each time I've had a baby as well, I've been in a different state and I've not had family support around. Mm -hmm. So it's been such a, a challenging time, whether it be yeah. with my first, second or third, because of course, like you mentioned too, you've got these other children to think about when you've got, you know, if you're giving birth to say your third child, you've got these other two that you've got to consider. And with that comes yeah. its own challenges, doesn't it? So it does, and it's such a sacred time, and it's such an important time to be resting. And really, the mother post birth should should really ideally be doing nothing else other than resting with her baby and bonding. And if she chooses to breastfeeding mm. for the first um, sort of forty days, for the first six weeks, and it's a long time, so we really have to invest in that support for the family. And it's it's really too much on the partner if there is a partner to do um, on their own. I think mm. so. Mm. Really making sure that there's that that support that person that shows up for the family and does all that they can so that mother is really getting that critical rest she needs is so important yeah well I mean your body what your body's doing when you're you know when you're pregnant and then obviously during the birth and and then post postpartum it really is the biggest life-changing event that your body will ever go through and it's the most yeah. you know the, the the biggest thing to to overcome and get through and for your body to recover from um, it's a bit like running 10 marathons almost isn't it it's like it's you can't compare it even to that really but it's it's yeah. you've got to think about it like that I guess too don't you you do have to think about it like that and I think we we prepare a lot prenatally while we're pregnant in like you know we prep the nursery we buy all the things and I think obviously that's important and that's really meaningful for a lot of people so I don't want to take that away from it but I really think there should be a layer that's added to that planning mm. and to be budgeted for as well so mm. um, not everyone can afford a postpartum doula absolutely we need to recognize that but if you can and you've got the funds there think about how you want to really prioritize that funding and mm. um, maybe you get a secondhand stroller maybe you don't need to buy all the things and maybe you can start saving early you know at the beginning of your pregnancy or while you're planning a baby mm. for that postpartum support and really investing in it because you're investing in the health of yourself your family your baby everything like just making sure that you're not cooking cleaning doing the washing doing physical things like that um that are really that will just tie you out so much and and will mean that you'll feel depleted you know for years to come like mm. this is a really important time to prioritize that rest yeah absolutely i couldn't agree more and if i'd had that wow, things would have been very different back then. I can definitely foresee that, you know, anyone who can, yeah, who can take on that support, um, hearing more about it today is just, yeah, I think it would be invaluable and definitely something to invest in. So what is the difference, real difference between a doula versus a midwife? Because I think, again, it can be tricky to understand where the roles collide or where the roles cross over and what the differences yeah. are. Yeah, it's a really good question. So the main difference is that a doula is not medical in any way. Okay. So we show up for the emotional and physical support of the birthing person and their partner and a midwife is medical. So they, so while they're very much concerned about the emotional health of the birthing person, they also have to prioritise the physical health of the, the person having the baby and their baby. So mm. first and foremost is that, that is their priority, the physical health. And some people might choose a doula over a midwife because um, they're looking for that non-medical continuity of care. So they might already have their obstetrician or their midwife in the system, but they really want someone to complement that care. So we're really, we are complementary to what uh, a midwife or an obstetrician provide, but mm. um, really our focus is on the emotional side of things and that informational layer that um, potentially is, is lost without our care. So, you know, hospital midwives love doulas because we're doing the we're doing the work that they wish they had the time to be doing yeah. so they've got a lot of overhead a lot of admin they have a, they spend a lot of time on the computer writing things and they really want to be doing the hip squeezes the encouragement they want to be doing all of that for the birthing person and, and often they do and they can show up for that but when there's a doula there they're they're like oh thank goodness you know we don't we know that they're getting the care that we wish we could be giving them mm. so yeah we work really beautifully with midwives and really complimentary with other care providers yeah wonderful so in your opinion this is going to be probably a very obvious um, yes answer but do first-time parents really need a doula I guess is the next question but again you know if, if you can't get one what would be you know something that you could think about doing too is another question there just to pop in because I think for those parents that they'd love to have one but can't what are the other things that they can think about doing but yeah that's the first the first obvious question is do do first-time parents need a doula and I guess yeah I guess your answer is going to be yes <laughs> 
Yeah, my answer is yes. And I also, I, I think even second, third, fourth time parents need a doula. Yeah. You know, I think it's really important to have a doula yeah. um, for all your different experiences because a lot of the times I'm working with second, third time parents who have had potential birth trauma in their past, who have had other things, traumas that have impacted their first and second birth. They haven't, you know, had a had a chance to really work through and talk through so mm. i think you know in my opinion like at every birth there should be if if you have the um the means the financial means then yes a doula is essential if you are hoping to have a doula and it's a financial question then there are student doulas i mean i did the first five births for free i didn't charge at all so there are student doulas who are that working for free okay. so you can seek those out i think it's a really good starting point beyond mm. that Ed, um, education is so important. So investing in some independent from the hospital education. So mm. hospital birth classes have their place, absolutely. But doing an independent birth class is really important as well. So doing what you can to educate yourself and then books, reading books um, and looking on the internet in for evidence-based sort of resources as well so that you can um, make sure that you're prepping yourself in the best way possible and getting all the information you need from really true evidence-based sites. And so... Yeah. Um, I write about a lot, quite a lot about this in my book and I cite the sort of um, the the sort of resources that I recommend and they're the ones that do have ed- evidence behind them. So just knowing where to begin is yeah, reading books um, and doing some um, independent hos- like independent of the hospital birth classes is really, really important. Mm-hmm. So what are some of the um, resources that you could recommend potentially? One of my favorite books, I don't know if you've heard of Ina Mae Gaskin. Yes. She's a, um, yeah, she's a, an American midwife and she's in, I think she's in her 80s now. So she's been doing this work for a really long time. But one thing, the, the one thing I did during my first um, pregnancy was read Ina Mae's Guide to Childbirth. Yep. And if you can only read one book, um, and I should be yeah talking about my book here and saying if you could only read one book, <laughs> read mine. But really, honestly, if you could only read one book, read Ina Mae's Guide to Childbirth because I think it is just such a gentle nourishing wonderful easy read like she has another book called spiritual midwifery i've got that one sitting beside me on my bedside table and i've read it a number of times i just love having it there and it's just such a beautiful book yeah yes it's a wonderful book and it's it's more dense so it's yes honestly if you're really into this read that as well but (laughs) the guy childbirth is a condensed version of it and it's just such a great book and i really think it does set you on a path um so that's one resource and there's another there's a film called birth time so everyone should see the film called birth Time. i've heard of it i haven't seen it yet though i can't wait to watch it so good and I think if you can go and see birth time you're going to learn a lot about Mm. kind of a lot about what I'm saying but just a lot about our system and the system you know if you are planning a hospital birth which sort of 99% of uh, people in Australia do then it's a really good guide to the system so you're Mm. understanding what you're you know the culture that you're birthing in and the system you're birthing in so yeah read Ina May's Guide to Childbirth and see birth time and begin there and then start booking some um yeah some education that is independent of the hospital and and then go from there like there are there's another there's quite a few podcasts at the moment as well which I think um are wonderful so one of them is evidencebasedbirth.com um that's a website and also a podcast and it's just really good as you're writing your birth preferences to really understand the evidence of everything that you're putting into that so that's a great podcast so listen listen to that and then you know there are so many out there but um just start sort of getting a guide that way start following some doulas on Instagram Instagram, you get some really great in, like information free um, on Instagram as well. So start, you know, start exploring that and just yeah. sort of leaning into what, what feels right to you. Yeah. So do you have any stats that you can take us through briefly as well? I guess the reasons why a doula can be can be great because I think again it's good to know that there are you know some stats that have been pulled there around getting support mm-hmm. from doula and how it can make a difference in your birth. Yeah, yeah. So I'll talk about one, like the biggest study that's been done into doula support, and it was a 2017 Cochrane review. So Cochrane is a, um, the Cochrane database is another great um, resource as well, if you want to look that up. But this was a Cochrane review, and it reviewed 26 studies from 17 countries okay. involving more than 15,000 women. Wow. And it found that birthing people who had continuous labour support, so continuous labour support could be a doula, most likely a doula or an independent midwife. It's not a midwife in the 
the hospital setting because that's not continuous support. They're in and out of the room and it's not an obstetrician because that's not continuous support either unless they're staying with you the whole time. So really yeah. it was looking at doulas and private midwives. Yeah. And those women, out of all about 15,000 women, they experienced shorter labours, lower caesarean birth rates, late, lower epidural rates, lower assisted birth rates, that's forceps and um, vacuum. And the most important one, I think, is that they were more satisfied overall with their birth experiences. Mm. So I think that's the biggest thing that we work towards is that you're emerging from birth feeling empowered and feeling like you've done an incredible thing because you always have, but making sure that you're not emerging from birth with trauma as unfortunately one in three Australian women are. Mm. So we're working to try to prevent any kind of trauma around your birth and the, the, you know, the way that we can get it around that is ensuring that you feel in control, that you feel in your power and that you're respected and you're heard mm. and you're really um, driving the experience. It's so important. So it's less about how that baby's born and really about how you feel about the experience and how supported you were throughout it. Yeah, absolutely. So another question is, can doulas sort of give medical advice? And if so, what types of advice can they give, Gabrielle? Yeah, no, absolutely not. We're not medically trained, so we cannot okay. give medical advice. So we help birthing people seek out evidence-based information and resources, and we yeah. provide them with questions to ask their care providers yeah. so that they can make an informed decision themselves. Um, and we remind them that they have rights and that they've got choices, and we really support them to advocate for themselves, but we never advise and that's really dangerously out of our scope. So if you had a doula who was giving you medical advice, that's a, that, that's a red flag. Okay, yeah, good to know. So how do you go about choosing the, the right doula for you? I guess that's a big thing too, because again, mm -hmm. it's all about choosing a care provider that's right for you. So how, how, what would you recommend there for people listening today? That's such an important thing. So not, not choosing the first doula you meet is a good idea. Um, I think <laughs> it's really important to do your research and, um, and just sort of get a, get a sense for the different doulas working out there. So at Gather, um, which is a space that I run that you mentioned at the start, we have 35 birth and postpartum doulas as part of our collective. And mm. a big part of the work that I do here is to connect families with doulas that fit their budget, their location. And the most important thing is the energy. So really um, people come to me and say, I'm looking for a doula. I'm hoping for A, B and C. And I always say to them, wonderful. I give them a list of doulas that will suit them and their budget. And I say, when you're talking to these doulas, um, choose the one you feel most connected with, the one mm -hmm. that you feel the most comfortable with, the one that you can you think that you can be really vulnerable in front of, because this is either your birth or your postpartum or both. And they're both, you know, truly some of the most vulnerable times of your life. So do you feel at ease with that person? Do you feel connected on a, like an energetic level? And your partner as well, like do they feel really connected to this person if there is a partner? Because um, it's really important that the three of you are working closely as a team together. Mm. So I think that you'll know like as you start, if anyone's out there listening, they're starting to look for doulas, you, might, you really know, like I feel like the first time you sort of meet someone, you know if they're going to be right for you or not. And I would say if, they, if there's any sense that they're not right like maybe they've been recommended a hundred times maybe you, you think they're an amazing person but if it doesn't feel right mm. listen to that sort of gut feeling mm. and don't go with them because it and you know the doula will probably pick up on that as well and and sort of suggest that you know gently suggest that you you keep looking for another one because i think it's re that connection is so important so really truly find finding someone that you feel connected with is important but yeah how do you find a doula look you can come to us at gather and i can support you if you're melbourne based if you're not melbourne based i think looking on instagram is a really good thing there's lots of doulas on instagram now so seeking out those in your area um asking friends and family who may have used a doula word of mouth um Sometimes if you're in the public or even in the private system, like obstetricians and midwives will have doulas that they recommend. So checking in and seeing if there are any doulas that are recommended through the care providers that you're going with is a really good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there's a lot. I mean, the good thing about it is that there are so many doulas access, like, you know, accessible now when I was um pregnant for the first time seven years ago it wasn't the case and i think it's much easier now to find a doula so mm. yeah i think um they're out there you do have to seek them out but but like i said in the beginning make sure that you're choosing the right doula for you not just not just the one you come across and and you feel like you should choose them because you've met with them and spent the time meeting with them that's yeah don't do that <laughs> yeah definitely so what type of training do doulas go through because again i think like you've mentioned it's very different to midwifery care and it's very different to a midwife so what type of training do doulas um, actually undertake 
Yeah, it's really, it's a good question. So you can, you can sort of show up tomorrow as a doula in a hospital setting or in a home birth setting and say, look, I'm a doula and I'm here as a birth support person without any training. And that's, that's possible, but really most doulas and, and most good doulas will go through some extensive training. So there's no sort of minimum prerequisite training that doulas, like there's no sort of official governing body for doulas. So there's lots of trainings out there. Um, if anyone's listening and hoping to become a doula, there's a few that I recommend. So if you, you know, you can always reach out to me and ask me which ones I recommend. There's only a few out of the hundreds available that I truly recommend. So for me, my, my training involved um, quite a few months of pre-work. So quite a lot of essay writing and research. And then mm. I did three days in-person training in New York. And then there was six months of uh, quite extensive post-work as well. And then after I'd done the five births that I'd spoken about earlier, then I was officially certified as a doula. So all in all, it was about 18 months of training and work for me. Um, uh, but you know, like I said, every training is quite different. Mm-hmm. So how does a doula work alongside your birth plan and the rest of the medical team during the birth and labour as well? I know you've talked a little bit about it, but just a little bit more in depth for people listening today, I think might be great just to understand how it's going to actually all, all come into play on that really important birth birth day <laughs> yeah yeah so um yeah our role like i said earlier we really complement each other with our different sort of skills and priorities um and the most important thing for all of us in the room is supporting and protecting the birthing person and working together to make sure sure that their space is protected and they're getting the information and the support that they really need so mm. um in my personal experience one of the most important things i can do is to protect the space of the birthing person and to really work harmoniously with the care providers in the room mm. and to ensure that there's no friction um which can really easily disrupt the energy of the birth space so mm. i'm making sure that you know if, if it does come to that then sort of the birth part partners often stepping out of the room and talking to the care provider if needed. So we're doing a lot of work to really protect that birthing person from anything like that. Mm. Um, and yeah, like I said, most most obstetricians and most midwives are just so supportive of having doulas in the space because it really is an extra support for the birthing person. And at the end of the day, our priority is making sure that they yeah, that they feel really safe and protected. So we all we're all working together in that. So um, yeah, that's that's probably what I'll yeah, what I would say. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Gabrielle. It's been wonderful learning a bit more about what a doula is and the role they play in pregnancy and in the labour and then obviously post-birth. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me, Tiffany. It's been a joy in speaking to you. Yeah, well, I've loved learning all about it, I guess, because of my passion as well in wanting to potentially become a midwife or doula in the future. It's um, really exciting to chat with you a bit more about it today. So thanks so much. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. (laughs) I hope you've learned a few things while listening today. If you'd like to learn more about doulas and the supports they offer, you can head to www.gatherwomenspace.com or follow them on Instagram at gatherwomenspace. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in today. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about this podcast. And if you'd like listening, please leave us a review. See you next time.